It's even better the second time. <laughs> I mean, this is the first time. I've never heard this song before. <laughs> Welcome back for the remix. <laughs> remix. Beep, beep, beep. Night Funk Baby. Halloween Redux. In the background, you hear the cumbia. All right. So for anybody wondering why there wasn't a episode last Friday, which would be the first time we haven't posted a on a Friday in like a year and a half since we started this show. We posted on Saturdays. Uh, no. I know for a fact that we have it. Okay, cool. Because I've always made sure to always have a post on Friday. All I've right. been very strict with myself for like a very long time. Quick, guy who said we copied Joe Rogan. Fact check us. <laughs> <laughs> There's been multiple people to say that. I know, which, it's so uh, weird. It's funny how when you decide to share knowledge that he has also shared, they immediately like, you're copying him. I'm like, guys, this is public knowledge. Yeah. Like this, th this is an actual study that was done online. You can find it. Like yeah. just type in... Type it in Google. Monkeys it's, fucking for money. Yeah, yep. it, it, you'll find it. It's it, 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 There's multiple articles about it, too. Mm -hmm. I did want to, like, uh, go through the comments and just say to everyone who's asking about the source, be like, it's somewhere in the comments. Look for it. I mean, to be fair, yeah. at this point, because of how big Rogan is, isn't every podcast at this point a, like a ripoff of Rogan? Yeah, the, we've all talked about the same things. Yeah. Yeah. You've probably talked about the same shit. But everybody gets their information from different medias. That's the whole point of having yeah. multiple medias. Some people don't want to listen to Rogan. Some yeah. people want to fucking listen to, you know. Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro. And fucking um, uh, Lex Friedman. and Alex Jones. Well, not anymore. Well. He never really had a podcast. He kind of had like a Infowars. Yeah, I don't even know what like how I I think they only do it through their own website now. Yeah, but it was like a it was like a like a news show. Yeah, because I don't think any of his stuff is able to be posted on any other platform. No, they banned him. I think from like Spotify and everything. Well, I think his episodes that he did with Rogan are still up, but that's probably the exception. Mm -hmm. As far as as far as his own content, I don't think that's the case. But anyways. Happy Halloween, everybody. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> so happy delayed uh, Halloween. Happy Dia de los Muertos. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, shout out to all the um, uh, passed away pets. I have a little shrine for my Cosmo. Yeah, I got one now. Yeah. 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 Uh, Joe sadly lost his cat recently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, rest in peace, Gata. Yeah. What was her real name again? Chitara. Chitara. Yeah, That's what it the was. the Thundercats. All right. Yeah. Never called her that. Uh, for real? Yeah, I just called her Gata. <laughs> Did you get the name Gata for her from your mom? Yeah, like, because my mom can't say Chitara. <laughs> I keep like, Mom, Chitara. She's like, Gata. Uh, chancla. Chancla. <laughs> Chica tu madre. Okay. <laughs> um, welcome to the Night Funk Podcast. Yeah, welcome to the Night Funk Podcast. Yeah. Today for this Halloween episode, we decided we're going to talk about horror movies. Woo! Specifically, our favorite horror movies, and then later... In the episode, I'm going to do my top five favorite vampire movies. Twilight, Breaking Dawn, <laughs> New Moon. <laughs> Just the whole Twilight series. Both parts. <laughs> Personally, I'm not a huge fan of vampires. I just decided to go with a classic, like, get up. Yeah. Uh, just for the sake of Halloween. But I have seen, I mean, there's been, like, a ton of vampire movies throughout the years mm -hmm. i was actually going online and being like i want to see if i can i want to look at a, a, a at a long list of every vampire movie that's ever been made right it's a lot and it's a lot it's yeah. a lot and what i learned quickly is that majority of all of them are bad oh yeah almost all of them are bad there's yeah. only a few good ones it's a weird monster to try to put into a movie yeah but it's been around for, technically the very first horror movie was a vampire movie that yeah, wasn't nosferatu yeah nosferatu yeah. and uh that was back in 1922 yeah that's a really fucking old movie but think about it 1922 to drop a horror movie for the first time that must have fucking been like like fucking terrifying for terrifying one. the fuck out of everybody yeah. yeah he's a creepy dude like whoever made like that character design mm-hmm like, it was probably just the actor who was like, I need to make this guy look fucking creepy as shit. I believe Nosferatu was a German movie originally, and it is based on the Dracula novel. Yeah. Which uh, which uh, predates the movie, obviously. Mm -hmm. Everything comes from a book, event, like, for the most part. Yeah. 
Or a comic book, that too. But more on that later. But one of the things I thought would be fun for us to do is like we're gonna we're gonna go down the list of like horror movies that we enjoy. Yeah. Let's talk about how well would we fare <laughs> in that universe. All right. I'm gonna kick it off with the first one. Classic. I'm sure I know you love this movie. Mm-hmm. Dawn of the Dead. Oh, I'll do it. You think you'd survive? Fuck yeah. You sure? Hell's yeah, dude. I feel like like me, me personally. I've read and watch so much zombie. Dude, zombie movies are my all-time favorite. I know, but isn't like the whole trope of zombie movies is that eventually something's going to go wrong and then you're going to be ended up getting swarmed. Yeah, because you're stupid. Uh, I know, but I feel yeah. like you in the case of like Dawn of the Dead, you don't know that it's coming. It just comes. Well, yeah. So you have like limited time to prepare and also limited time to get the fuck where you need to be. Yeah, don't go to a mall. That that's step one. Don't go to a fucking mall. There's where would you so go? So many. There's so many. In. You know where I would go actually? Where? Uh, the first thing I would do is uh, well, I would just hunker down. I would uh, like I don't have a second floor, but if I had a second floor in a house, I would go uh, take. You take all your food upstairs. You fill up the tub with water. You fill up every receptacle you can with water. You break the fucking stairs and just do like a pull up ladder. Mm-hmm. And you wait. You stay there until you like you're almost like almost out of food. Like you have enough food to last you maybe for like a week that you can carry, and then you head out. Because by that point, if you ration your shit right and stayed quiet and just bided your time, most of the people would be fucking dead. And the zombies that were there are chasing those people down. Mm-hmm. So you can just go like we live out here in the fucking stick sometimes. Yeah, there's houses out here with people that had guns. They're probably fucking dead. Because they were shooting off their guns, drawing every zombie around, and then you can just take their guns. Uh, there's fucking farm tools everywhere. So machetes, hammers, everything. There's building material everywhere. You can just yeah. build a fucking fort. You can fortnight it. Honestly, I, I, I thought about that, too. It's like it, it would benefit you more than anything to be on the countryside because you have a lot of open space that mm-hmm. you can like you know board up and fence up and shit. And then you can you have access to farmland that you yeah. can grow your own fucking food. But... um. Eventually, I would kind of try to make my way into, um, depending on where I am. Like, here, the closest one, there's a Buf- uh, down in Buford, that Costco. I mean, there's a lot of houses and stuff around there, but I would try to make my way to the Costco, shut down the doors, because they have the roll doors yeah. that lock at the bottom. So to pry those bitches open, it's, it takes some time. And then I would use the scaffolding and build a fucking, like, platform up in that top scaffolding so yeah pretty much just make a little home base like hiding up there and then whenever i need something from downstairs like supplies like dry goods yeah just kind of dick, 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 dick. i'll take some spam some corn and just <laughs> pull my way back up now yeah. i i can i can tell you put a lot of thought into oh, this god yeah dude yeah Okay, now let's do the reality of what happens. I'm fat and I'm diabetic. <laughs> you run, you run out of insulin and you yeah. pass well, out. I don't, I don't have insulin. I have metformin. Yeah, I'm but re- but if you don't have the supply of your medication, eventually it's like a ticking time bomb, ain't it? So what I would do is I would just ration mine out. So mm-hmm. I would just start breaking mine into like quarters. It's gonna suck in the beginning, but I'm gonna have to like watch my diet, make sure I'm you know trying to stay like limber. I'll probably shed a fuck ton of weight because I'm not eating as much. Mm-hmm. Which would be kind of a problem in the beginning because my uh, levels would shoot up. But I would just have to watch myself for those first couple, like, maybe like a month or two. Just make sure I don't, like, pass out or something. Okay. Yeah. But I think I can make it. And then after a while, like, for me, once I lose more weight, uh, I shouldn't need the medicine anymore. So. I guess, yeah, I guess that's true. So, I got, I got it, man. The insulin's just a hurdle. <laughs> or the, the, the diabetes is just a hurdle. Okay. What about you? What would you do? Uh, I just you can make it. No, nah, I just die. Oh, okay. Call it a day. <laughs> Why? I go outside. I just hear the sirens. Uh, uh fuck it. Time to go. <laughs> I told you about that. I have, I'm a bit of a quitter. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a dream. Like I have like vivid like horror movie dreams. They're yeah. Really cool because I'm I'm like I'm never the main character, which is weird. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm always the side character. That's just like there <laughs> in your, in your yeah. dreams. You're always the comic relief. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just there. Like I'm not, I'm not integral to the story. So it doesn't matter if I live <laughs> or die. 
<laughs> so I have no pressure on me. I'm just fucking there to, to fucking hang out and kill zombies and shit. We have to defend our home. Bazinga. <laughs> I'm just in the background like, huh? I'm just cleaning my gun. <laughs> but I had this one vivid one. I was like, I was fucking all, I think I talked about it before. I was all tacked out and I was wearing like, you know, the body plate. I don't know why I'm wearing body plates for zombies because mm-hmm. they're not shooting guns at me. I guess other people. And uh, we're running away, and I'm, we're going up, like, a bunch of flights of stairs. Yeah. And then we can see zombies piling in, climbing up, and, like, filling in. And um, everyone's trying to get to the roof because there's a helicopter or something coming to get us. And, of course, I, I do, like, the action movie thing. I was like, I'll hold them back. So mm-hmm. everyone gets to the roof. I'm going to I'm gonna buy you all time. And I'm just standing up there just <laughs> throwing grenades and shit and, like, finally running out of ammo. And the zombies get me, and they start binding me. So I push him off, and then I do the fucking, like, you know the scene from Mad Max when the guy gets, uh, like, hit by, like, a, he gets shot, and he's dying, Mm -hmm. so he just does the fucking spray in the mouth and says, witness me, and fucking leaps off the back holding the two boom stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I pretty much do, and I just have a fucking claymore attached to the front of me. (laughs) Yeah. So I just jump, and, ah, and I wake up, and I'm like, that's fucking cool. (laughs) Yeah, but you you wake up... As you die in the dream, like the I hear, I see the, and I wake up. Mm. Yeah, it's weird because like it, it does the. Uh, Dude, this is why I'm not allowed to eat pork chops before bed anymore because <laughs> I'll just dream like really wild dreams. They I, say if you eat cheese before bed, you'll have really vivid dreams. Yeah, I think yeah. that was done by a mouse. A mouse. Yeah, a study. Stuart done, Little. Yeah, Stuart Little. That fuck. <laughs> Rest in peace. He was found dead in Chicago. I thought it was Houston. No, it was Chicago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Chirac. <laughs> uh, moving on to the next one. Okay, and this one was I thought it would be similar, mm-hmm. but different. Alien. Alien movie? Yeah. Like what kind of alien? You're, you're, no, like the movie Alien. Oh, the movie Alien? No, we're fucked. Yeah, you're compl- <laughs> yeah. we're completely fucked. God, no, you're, no stuck on a, you're stuck on a space like fucking shuttle, right? Or is it like, what is it? Yeah, it's a space shuttle. Is the, it a space shuttle or is it a research facility? No, it's a, no, it's a mining vessel. Like, or no, it's a cargo ship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they're, uh, they're pulling cargo. Unless you're a fucking, um, what's your name? The fucking queen of sci-fi herself. Ridley Scott. Huh? Ridley Scott. Is it Ridley Scott? No. No. Well, that's um, her name of the movie. Sigourney Weaver. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're Sigourney Weaver, who has been in one too many like sci-fi movies, you're not going to survive that fucking thing. Yeah. That is a damn good movie. It still holds up to this day. Yeah, she was fine as fuck in that first movie. Yeah. yeah. What are you talking about? She still is. I mean, yeah. yeah have you seen her in Holes? <laughs> <laughs> I saw her Holes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, that if it was Aliens from the movie Aliens, now nah, we're fucked. Because okay. you know what else is there? Mm. Predator. Oh, true. Yeah, they live in the same universe, which is weird. Yeah. Yeah. I never watched that Prometheus movie, but that wasn't that whole movie like talking about like how they made the fucking like aliens. Yeah. So it it shows like the beginnings of it. Yeah. So there you go. To I the heard that it's planet. not. I heard it's not a good movie. I liked it. It's 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 kind of weird mm-hmm. uh, because uh, humanity started with one of the uh, Promethean aliens going to Earth. Drinking this stuff and then turning into like black goo and falling into a waterfall, and then that's what creates uh, us. Uh. Yeah. So he's they start off uh, evolution. Okay. Yeah. So we're aliens. Or we're alien cum. <laughs> yeah. He turned into black cum. This sounds like fucking Scientology propaganda to it me. Probably is. It probably yeah. is. But um, no, Prometheus is pretty good. The Lord Zenu came to Earth. And he came into the lake. All right, okay. Let's 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 kick it up. Let's change it up a little bit. Let's go so with something more campy. Halloween series. Halloween series. Oh, yeah. bro, we're fucked. Yeah. No I'm, matter how fast we run, he's gonna catch up. Well, this is the thing I've always been curious about Michael Myers' character. Mm-hmm. Why can't he die? Is he just the boogeyman? Is that the whole fucking like basis of it? It's um because he's been like what stabbed he's in been the stabbed, hanged. He had his head cut off. It depends on the movie because the if you look into the Halloween movies, they jump. So there's one where like it ends with him like getting his head fucking cut off, but that's an alternate ending to this line of movies. <laughs> and then there's another movie that jumps everything where he's not dead and he's still alive. <laughs> did you enjoy the Rob Zombie version of it? The first one that he did? 
when Rob Zombie remade. Oh yeah, uh, with the little kid. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The first one wasn't bad. The second yeah. one was complete horse shit. But the first one, I just love the f- fucking bathroom scene with the black dude. He's like, "I'm Joe Grizzly, bitch." Yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> he just fucks him up. He's taking his shit and he's yeah. reading like like Skank magazine or some <laughs> shit like that. And then you just see him go, hmm, hmm, hmm. like you know, and then you know his. Uh, uh, I guess Rob Zombie played, um, was it My- uh, Michael in the movie? He did. Yeah, that's that's Rob Zombie. Oh, are you serious? Yeah, he he's played a big motherfucker. Oh yeah, he's always been a big motherfucker, dude. Jesus, dude. I think he's like six foot five, six God foot damn. six. <clears throat> he's a big fucking dude, and he also just looks like a fucking homeless man. Yeah, ripped Danny Trejo in the second one. Yeah, yeah. no, that's the first one. Oh, when he escapes, right? The, yes, because yeah. uh, he was yeah. the only one that was good to Michael. Yeah, yeah, but that that fucking scene really got me because I thought that scene was kind of fucked up, like how he was begging for his life and shit. No, before that, it's basically whenever the the wherever the guys who are like the ones taking care of the facility, they rape the mentally ill girl oh, in yeah. front of him because mm-hmm. they're just like trying to mock him. And then one of them like rips one of his masks or like the, or fucks it up, and then that's what makes him get up and do something about it. Yeah. But the thing is, I believe in the original cut. I don't remember if it was cut, but I remember watching like the deleted scenes of it because I had that movie on DVD, mm-hmm. and I enjoyed I enjoyed it. Um, uh, watching it a couple of times, and I remember watching the extras in one of the deleted scenes. He doesn't just kill the two dudes; he also kills the girl. And then he just starts murdering everybody like in the facility, hmm. like like Michael Myers, his whole character. Like they made him like very unhinged, because as far as I know, I don't think he murders children. No, no, he does. Does he murder children? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he kills uh, like two kids. Well, he killed kids when he was a kid. No, I don't but he killed that. two kids when he was like adult Michael. Okay, yeah. I'm not sure. That's the problem with some series, like. I don't know where the lore is anymore because I know they yeah. they made recent ones with with Jamie Lee Curtis like still like coming back yeah like still playing like with the sister I believe yeah or no he's the no it's the sister yeah. yeah he plays she played the sister and then like I don't understand like why they keep making more and more. Like, yeah, I don't know. He's I, like, I, she's always expecting him to come back, and he always does come back. And she's always got some convoluted, like, fucking plan to fucking try to kill him and shit, but it always seems to yeah. not really be worth it. But I guess it's... I think it's just supposed to show, like, um, it's supposed to be like, oh, evil never dies. Okay. You can never stop evil. Yeah. Okay. Well, next movie, I know for a fact we're probably not going to survive, but I love this movie. It's a great movie. Uh, John Carpenter's The Thing. The thing? Oh no, we're fucked. Yeah, we're fucked. But we're, we're too trusting. But super underrated movie. No, underrated. What are you talking about? What the thing? Yeah, oh, that's a that's a fucking classic. What I'm, are you talking about? Underrated. Underrated as in people don't give it enough praise. What are you talking? about? I feel about? like people don't give the. How often do you hear somebody say the thing is my favorite movie? A you lot only, of people. I don't. Bro, that movie. Most people always so much stuff. Dude, most people go fucking Halloween, Friday the Thirteenth, Scream. They always say some other bullshit. No, people don't say the thing that often. One, because it's very hard to like, I guess, portray the thing in like media. Like, you know, how, how often do you go on TikTok and do you see a bunch of fucking people dressed in campy, like, horror characters dancing in a fucking TikTok video? Uh, you yeah. can't do that with the thing. Just imagine I mean, fucking arms. <laughs> you can. But what I'm saying is, I believe that movie's underrated. I feel that people don't give it. Like, yeah, okay. I feel like you would understand that, yes, it is a great movie. And to you, it's not underrated. But you are a horror fan. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, I fucking love that movie. Just how it plays on just paranoia. The mm-hmm. whole movie, like, the monster is second to the paranoia. Mm-hmm. And it's fucking ridiculous. Just the body horror, all the fucking, like, the spider legs coming out of the bottom of the head and the head scurrying away and the dog at the end is fucking ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a lot of, like, it's the detail that matters. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I feel like that's one of those things that makes a lot of horror movies really shine is when you can emphasize the horror without having to like, mm-hmm. like really like put it front and center. A great example. Another great example is a uh, American werewolf in London. 
Oh, like where yeah. you never get a straight shot of the thing, but you always see it like mm-hmm. like tearing someone apart, and they do it in a, such a way that makes it feel fucking real. Yeah. Like and it, then the, the the scene for that that everyone talks about <laughs> is just amazing. Uh, the transformation scene when yeah. he turns into the werewolf. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's all practical fucking effects. Yeah, like it's ridiculous how much they did for that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, another movie that's really cool that I enjoyed recently. That plays on the whole, um, just not even. It's not even about the monsters or the whatever at the end. At the end, it's about just the the feeling, the dread that it makes you feel. Mm-hmm. Um, it's on Hulu. Watch it if you if have Hulu or fucking pirate it. I don't care. Um, it's called uh, uh, "No One Can Save You," mm. and no dialogue. Really, absolutely throughout the whole movie, there's no dialogue. You do hear, like, things in the background, but, yeah. The main character, you just follow her around. She doesn't talk. It's all context clues and looking at the things around her to get the full story. Now, that sounds interesting. Yeah. But what I've been noticing is, like, I watch a lot of people, like, on YouTube that are super into, like, Mm -hmm. horror. Like, one of my favorite dudes to watch on YouTube is Meat Canyon. I actually like his, like... Yeah, just good. I like his side channel, um, Papa Meat, where he kind of talks more about Mm -hmm. horror movies and stuff. And I remember he had put up this one video about a movie that's been very uh, controversial. It's been controversial because a lot of people love it and a lot of people hate it. But this whole movie is based on one thing, and it's kind of ambiance, right? Uh, it's this movie called um, uh, Skin a Ring. Have you heard about it? I, it's on my list to watch. I've heard it's good. I heard the opposite. I heard it's a drag because the whole movie hmm. is just – building this atmosphere and kind of giving this kind of like unsettling like it it, all it does is build up this unsettling feeling for like an hour and a half okay and it doesn't really go anywhere it's just kind of like but people were like what this movie does well uh is is that is create this really creepy omniance that's like never been done before okay but at the same time it doesn't really do anything but that that is the whole movie. So it's just unsettling then. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. But it's I like mean, uh it's like the movie that came out recently, uh, Hereditary. That movie did the same exact thing. The conversations. Yeah, but that, that still had a up. plot though. I mean, but still, I'm I'm talking just talking about the overall feeling of the movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's the feeling it's conversations you don't want to have. It's talking about the things that you don't want to talk about. It's uncomfortable situations, like the whole, you know, the the son killed the fucking girl because her, she stuck her head out and he wasn't paying attention yeah. to fucking speeding because he took her to the party and, you know, fucked up. It's his fault that she's dead. You know what the new best one is, though? Mm. Have you seen Talk to Me? No, I haven't. I heard it's really good, though. It is fucking amazing. Yeah. Me and my wife watched it the other day. And the best way I can put it without giving any spoilers, this movie encapsulates peer pressure. Okay. It's all based on peer pressure and the the way like the lore of like what this world is is really interesting mm. it's 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 interesting because basically it's like imagine a, imagine a world where the new thing is uh the new thing that kids are doing is something that's so outlandish that we would never do but in this universe they are doing it uh because that's just where like uh, things have progressed to hmm. like this has just become a new norm because i mean w- at this point there's nothing else you can do okay. and it captures like it's it's a movie that really captures social media and like teenage peer pressure very well while also adding this creepy kind of like like do you say i know what the movie's about yeah they hold on to that hand and it t- it like makes them talk to ghosts or some shit like that uh uh, uh kind of yes and no yeah well the first part is, yeah, when you say talk to me, you can talk to them. Mm-hmm. But the, the, the kicker is um, they can say another thing, and they'll get possessed by the by the ghost they're talking to. Oh. And what happens is when they get possessed, they have up to a certain time to hold that possession before it completely fucks them. Oh. And if they manage to do it with – if they manage to get it, get it to – undo the possession within like a certain limit, they'll be fine. 
And the reason why they're doing this is because the feeling of possession is better than any drug they've ever done. Oh. So that's the where the temptation part comes. And it and it, it's 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 so fucking well written and mm. so interesting and the characters or one thing I really loved about this movie too is well this movie was done by two like um Australian YouTubers, right? Oh wow. And uh they one wrote this whole entire original script, but also majority majority of the cast are like unknown Australian actors. So it gives it this real feeling of 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 you uh, don't know the faces. Yeah, it feels like true, genuine. Like like this almost feels real, okay. you know. Although there is one actor in in it that I did uh, recognize. It took me a minute to figure out who she was, but I I recognized her. Okay, and she was um. Uh, Eowyn, I think, from Lord of the Rings. Really? Yeah, she's in that movie. What uh, what's her name? Liv. Liv Tyler. No, am I getting the name right? It's the it's the the blonde girl. Is it Aowen or I might be? Oh, the blonde lady uh, from Rohan. Yes. Oh, okay. I don't know her name, but yeah, yeah. She, okay. she that that it's her. She's much older. She plays like a mother in the uh, movie, okay. and I immediately was like, "Who is that ghoul?" Like you know, <laughs> I hate when I do that yeah. a lot now. It, it, we do it a lot too. It's ridiculous. Yeah, because it, you just recognize people, yeah. and it bothers you until you can figure it out. But anyways, moving on. Uh, so take me home is a great example of a modern movie of horror movie that I've really loved. Mm -hmm. Another one that I think, uh, deserves its praises is get out. Get out was really fucking good. It's a great movie. The whole concept of it is very great. Again, it's been out for a while. I still haven't seen it. Yeah. I need to see it. Yeah. It's, there's a lot of good movies out there Mm -hmm. that are worth watching. Although I did. I will say Get Out's still my favorite uh, Jordan Peele movie. Did you ever watch uh, Barbarian? Yes. Yeah? It's it's a good movie, too. Yeah, it was. It makes you really uh, think twice about getting an Airbnb. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. You don't know what the fuck's in the basement. (laughs) Jesus Christ. That movie had one of the best twists I've ever, like, thought of. It had a couple, because I was watching a movie, and then, like, that first cut, and then it goes to the fucking happy driving in California with the top down. Yeah. And then from there it goes back to the house and then it jumps again it's it's all over the place but it was good like it it it, surprising i i could not really guess what was going to happen usually with horror movies they follow kind of like a a blueprint i forgot to add that on my list but yeah barbarian is a great one Mm -hmm. so get out take me home hereditary barbarian those are all great modern horror movies Mm -hmm. go check them out if you have it the last one well actually yeah, the last one I would add to that one is one that I enjoyed, even though I don't think it's super spooky. Although I do think it is a great movie to watch if you just want to watch like a really nice, like artsy, like thing. And I'm not going yeah. with Midsummer. Midsummer is a good choice, though. No, I like that movie. Uh, it, Midsummer is good. I was gonna say The Witch. I really love. Oh fuck yeah, the, dude, the Witch. Witch was good. Deepest voice on a motherfucker. That dude must have the biggest fucking nuts <laughs> on a man because like his voice is so fucking yeah. deep, like. It sounds like your voice, like exaggerated. It's like, no, 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 no. yeah, like yeah. it, yeah. And it's it's so it's so crazy. Imagine you're so fucking religious that you tell the village like priest that he's a bigot, like yeah. <laughs> like he's a bitch, like he's like no, you're, you a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. I love God. <laughs> I'm gonna go fucking do my own thing. And then like the imagery of it, the mm-hmm. fucking like like. There's so much about that movie that's the so The beginning fucking... of the movie is just very unsettling because, you know, it starts with, a, uh, what's her face, the main character. She's doing, like, peekaboo with the baby. Yeah. And then she looks again. The baby's gone because the, the witches took her, mm-hmm. uh, took the baby. Um, but then the, the noise in the background, that wet slapping sound, that's someone cutting meat. Yeah. That's, they're, it's like they're cutting up the baby. Yeah, and that's like the feeling you get. You're like, oh god, what the fuck? It does show you at one point, like the witch. Like remember the old one of the old hag witches, mm-hmm. like naked, and you just see her like covered in blood. Like yeah. she's like obviously splattering something around, and yeah. and then you see that sexy ass witch that's naked that's tempting the boy and shit. Mm-hmm. And then his whole scene where he's like fucking possessed and stuff, and then they're trying to like save him and shit, and. You know, the goat hitting the fucking dad and then the dad getting trampled by the fucking logs. And then, 
the goat turns into the devil himself and tempts the girl to become yeah. a witch. Have you seen the video, uh, the picture of that like, ending, what he dude. looks like? Uh, what they show like uh, uh, what's his face like Black Phillip? Yeah, like what he looks like in human form mm-hmm. in the devil's form. Yeah, he's like the most like pimped out looking pilgrim ever, dude. Like he's got like his mustache like finely like tweeted out. He has like this really tall velvet hat and everything, black clothes. It made me really think about the um, like the interpretation of I guess like w- w- either death or the devil and like Red Dead Redemption. Remember, you always had the top hat guy. Oh that yeah, come up and always he he yeah. he greeted um, both Ar- Arthur Morgan and um, mm-hmm. and what's the, the the main the character from Red Dead Redemption? The Did first he greet one? Arthur. Yeah, he was, he's in that game. You have to fucking look for him. Yeah, he's in that hut. And the, all I know is you can find him in that in that house in the woods where his house is. Yeah. And then if you look in the mirror, he's standing behind you. Mm-hmm. And then there's no one there. But yeah, I didn't know you could talk to him. Uh, I might be wrong about that. I just, no, I am wrong about it. I'm thinking about the time traveler. Yeah, the time traveler. Yeah, that's a thing. That, that That's a fucking weird mm-hmm. one. But that one's still cool. Mm-hmm. And then you can beat that guy that thinks he's the devil. He's mm-hmm. in that cave, just a crazy old man being like, I'm Satan. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of really cool interactions in that game. Yeah. Solid game. Yeah, Go play is. Red Dead Redemption. What are you doing um, if you haven't played it? But, yeah, moving on. <laughs> now, I got to shout this one out because it started a whole subgenre that's been one of my favorite subgenres. Mm-hmm. But the Blair Witch Project with the found footage subgenre. Oh, yeah. Blair Witch Project. Uh, Honestly, okay. Yeah, first time you watch it is fucking terrifying. Other yeah, the first but the thing that sold it was the fucking advertisement for it. They mm-hmm. made it like they made a website of actual missing like people that yeah. were the ones involved. Like they made it all real, and it it, it turned like the internet upside down yeah, because I, they were like. I think it was like one of the first viral marketing things they've ever done, mm-hmm. uh, ever for a movie. Which is fucking genius. Yeah, it's fucking it genius. Yeah. Yeah, it fucking scared the shit out of me. Yeah, like everybody thought it was fucking real for a while. It's kind of mm-hmm. like the same with like. Like, I remember in high school, the big thing was the fucking whole Slender Man stuff, right? Because, oh, you know, the yeah. creepypasta came out, then people started making, like, fan art. And then those two girls almost killed that other girl. Yeah, well, that happened way later on. Yeah, that but w- still was part of it. And it was kind of like, what the fuck? Yeah, it was yeah. some fucking other weird shit. Yeah. Um, they were guess, trying to summon him. I guess there's a few other campy movies I haven't brought up yet because I feel... Uh, I feel like we'd have to go into another like discussion of whether or not we could survive, but I'll go ahead and go with one that we uh, um, skimmed over. Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, I'm fucking dead. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be too into the fucking uh, nightmare dream. Well, I feel like the only solution would be like just leave Elm Street. Well, no, he follows them. Even like, outside wherever, of Elm Street? Yeah. That was the whole thing. Like it's Yeah, it's called the Nightmare on Elm Street because that's where it started. Mm-hmm. Because that's where like the house where he got burnt down, or that's where he got caught with like the fucking knives and shit. Yeah, but and wasn't everything. he specifically only going after the children that were related to the ones who were responsible for his death? Yeah. So, but that no matter where they go, they would he would follow. Yeah. Because there's the other one. I for, I think it's the third one where he's at that. Uh, he's followed the kids to the mental institution. Yeah. And uh, I think that one has one of the coolest uh, uh, nightmare sequences because it has that. Uh, that one song, uh, I think it's Inagata da Vida. Is that dan 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 that song has such like a funny like history thing. If um, really? I don't know, like do you know do you know the significance of like what that means? No. It's just mumbling of in the Garden of, of Eden. Oh really? He was so fucked up he couldn't say the words. So right. literally in the lyrics he's like in the Garden of Eden, baby. <laughs> he's trying to say in the Garden of Eden, but he was so fucked up like because all these huh. hippies were like tripping on acid. <laughs> he just fucking got the lyrics like wrong, and then they left it like that. They're like. I sounds like, good. Sounds good. We're like, naming the song that. Indigata de Vida. Yeah. How do you spell it? Indigata de Vida. <laughs> now, um, what's the other one? Uh, the other campy one would be Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, ooh, that's a hard one. Maybe. I think we could fight. Uh, not Leatherface. He's fucking, he's got that, uh, 
He's got that strength on him. Yeah, but one thing I've noticed is like they um do they ever try to fucking like fight him like fight back or do they always run? Uh they always run because it's fucking terrifying. You're getting chased by a big ass dude. I know, but what do you what, what? um from what I can remember from the movies he always kills the guy characters or incapacitates them fast. Mm -hmm. Cause I think it's kind of like the realism of it is, Oh, they can probably fight back. But then the women of course are like, you know, the pretty skinny, uh, women for the movies and everything. He can just pin her down or they can just hold her down. So yeah. that's why the family full of like emaciated looking fucking people can keep yeah. her chained up and everything yeah it's funny the first time i ever watched the movie i never watched the original i watched the one that was like the remake that they did in like the 2000s oh yeah that one was still good but the thing about that movie was that as a kid the cannibal part went over my head i was too young to ever like catch on to like oh they're fucking cannibals no really yeah because i i guess i just wasn't really i, I guess like as a kid you're more just interested on the whole like monster movie aspect mm -hmm. of it you're not really catching on to like the subtle like the part like you know He's obviously hanging them on meat hooks and shit yeah. and like, you know. Uh, He's salting the wounds so that way they don't like bleed to death. Yeah. So you can keep the meat fresh. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was like, oh shit. Yeah. And then I, of course I never watched the original either. So I, I, I just wasn't like really catching on. Have you ever seen the original? Uh, I've seen like the iconic like scenes of it. I've never actually sat down and watched it from the beginning. You to need end. to watch the, the whole thing, dude. It's yeah. fucking good. Um, like, Would you say it's more terrifying? Then? Fuck yeah, dude. The uh, the actress actually had like some fucking like serious mental trauma after filming it. <laughs> no, because the actors, the other actors that that played the family and then the directors, everyone treated her like shit to make her feel to make her character more believable. Just like uh, what they what the fuck? It's uh, fucking some Alfred Hitchcock shit. Yeah, I remember the fucking like what is it that um, that the, bird movie? Yeah, he scared the. Fuck out of that lady. He trapped that girl in a fucking like room and then just had birds swarm her <laughs> and then she ended up being actual paranoid of birds. Yeah. Um, and what is it? Uh Kubrick, he did the same thing with the uh, the lady from uh The Shining. Yeah, he would treat her like shit. Yeah. Just to make her like more depressed and worn out looking. Yeah. So yeah. And he would make her um he would make her like reshoot scenes over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Just to make her even more tired looking. Yeah, The Shining is one of those movies where, like, it's a really good movie, but it's, like, also very confusing if you're not, like... Paying like, attention. If you're not paying attention and also if you're, like, a lot of things aren't explained until mm -hmm. you read the novel. Like, the novel itself oh, explains yeah. a lot of shit. Because there's some things that you're just straight up, like, why is this here? Like, the whole, like, two gentlemen in the, with the masks in mm -hmm. the room. Like, you know, and the guy, like, like th there were, like, two gay lovers or some yeah, shit like yeah. that. and. I don't know. It's 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 fucking one of those movies. You where think you can survive The Shining? Jack Nicholson comes at you. <clears throat> yeah, really. I'll challenge him to a game of golf. And then he'll get really pissed and be like, "You can't fucking beat me at golf, you bitch ass." And he just axes you yeah. in the fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, probably not. Uh, the same with Chainsaw Massacre. I feel like if you're stranded out there with all these fucking like cannibal hicks. Mm -hmm. And then you know they're, they're, there's no escaping them. They're they're, they're going to fucking run you down one way or another. I think old uh, original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I think I can do it. New one, no. I remember in the Chainsaw Massacre movie, like the remake one that the one that I watched originally. At the end of the movie, she like escapes with the baby, and she ended up cutting off one of uh, Leatherhead's arms. Yeah. And was that in the original movie? No. No? So that was it's, just like something they added? Yeah. In the original movie, she gets in the back of the truck and the truck drives away and Leatherface comes out. And she has a scene where she's just like a broken woman crying and screaming in the back of the truck. Mm -hmm. And then it cuts to Leatherface doing like his iconic, like spinning in the middle of the road, swinging his chains all around. Mm. And that's the end of the movie. Damn. Yeah. So the, that movie was like, holy shit. Like right from the beginning and end. Okay. Yeah. Um... Now, one of the, uh, okay, the next one I was going to bring up, also a classic, classic series, and I'm and I'm sure people have been waiting for me to bring this one up, but the Friday the 13th series. Now, I specifically wrote down Friday the 13th, part two, my favorite. The reason why that one's my favorite is because I like the original version 
the original look of Jason where he had the burlap sack yeah. over his head. I thought that design was so much cooler than the hockey mask. I get it. The hockey mask is more iconic, mm -hmm. and that's what they stuck with for the rest of them. But let's face it. like After like part four, it kind of just started getting really stupid but then they upgraded in jason next space <laughs> that movie's the worst one it's so fucking dumb it's dude. so fucking dumb like yeah. i i still think about the scene of like when they're where they try to trap him in the virtual reality world <laughs> and they and then they they <laughs> yeah. they bring up like two girls completely topless and they're like jumping yeah. around and he puts them in a sleeping bag and just beats them to death yeah and he's hitting one with one and then she dies and he just swings the other one into a tree and she's like oh my god <laughs> Yeah, and then the ending where he's like shooting through the atmosphere mm -hmm. back to Earth, and there's these two like teenagers at Camp Crystal Lake being like, "Oh, look, a shooting star!" Make a wish. Oh, it's so fucking yeah. stupid. And then when it fades away, you hear. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Although I'm not gonna lie, I know this movie is terrible. I know it's bad, but I love it. It brings back my childhood so much. Freddy vs. Jason was such a fucking. Oh movie. yeah. I've rewatched that movie recently, and I was like, it holds they gave, up. They gave Freddy a bunch <laughs> of funny lines in that movie. It fucking holds up. Yeah. It's fucking cool. There's nothing cooler than fucking like two horror icons fighting mm -hmm. each other. It's just, it's just fun. It's just fun. And then I love the. Like the, I just love some of the the scenes in it because like, some of them are really fucking cool. Like when he's on fire walking through the cornfield oh, and shit. Yeah. That scene is so fucking cool. And my, then you have that fat kid being like, <laughs> yeah. like just fucking. My favorite, my favorite thing of the whole movie is when they finally have like the big showdown in the end. Mm -hmm. And Freddy's over there dropping elbows like he's been doing fucking uh, Muay Thai his whole life. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> yeah. And Jason's like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> but not to mention that some scenes. And, like, these campy horror movies are just too fucking funny. Like, too fucking funny to, like, ignore. Uh, like, yeah. uh, like, uh, Jace, uh, was it Jason Goes to Manhattan? I haven't seen that in forever. I dude. think that's, I think, if I'm correct, I think that's five or six. Or it's before he goes to hell. No, he comes back from hell and he goes to Manhattan, I think. I don't remember. I just remembered his body was, no, no, no. Hell is the one after Manhattan. Okay. Because I think. Uh, so after so part three is the first one with the hockey mask. Part four is Jason lives, I believe, mm. and then I think Jason lives goes into Jason goes into Manhattan. I have the computer right here; I can look it up. Yeah, but still, when Jason's in Manhattan, that whole fucking scene of him. And the black dude on the rooftop fighting, and the dude's just like wailing on him. Oh, he's like a he's professional like, boxer, whoa, just whoa. fucking his shit up. He's like, I'm from the Bronx. Like, yeah. it's like, it's like but okay. then he starts getting tired. And he's like, oh, I fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> he's winning. He's like, <sighs> <laughs> and then there's that part where he's like, like they're, I guess they're in like, um, what is it? Um, Times Square. Yeah, Times Square. And he, like, breaks the, 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 the group of black dudes, like, boombox. And they're like, yo, what the fuck? And they all pull out, like, like switchblades and shit. <laughs> and he just turns around and lifts his mask. And they're all like, oh, fuck. Like, <laughs> they're just all like, fuck, nah. Like, yeah, it's, well, I love it when movies get really campy. Um, uh, what other one did? Like, Chucky. Those get really campy after a while. Uh, yeah. Uh, like, a, what is it, Bride of Chucky? Bride of Chucky is, like, by far, like, the craziest yeah. one. Uh, because the part when they're having sex and it's the shadows, she's like, wait, wait, are you wearing rubber? He's like, look at me. I'm, like, all rubber. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the one where, like, they're trying to, like, impregnate, like, the like one of the human girls, right? Oh, Jennifer Tilly. Oh, she's Je so pretty. Yeah, and then... Um, and then they just show a silhouette of Chucky like jacking yes, off. Right? Yeah, he's jacking off like in front of like a mirror or something yeah. like that. Uh, the whole movie was weird. Whatever happened to Jennifer Tilly? She's still around. Is she? Still she's around? still hot as fuck too. Is she still doing horror? Uh, every now and then, she did a, a Chucky movie recently. I think. Well, they have like a series now where they made him look like a uh, fucking. Weird at like they made like the character design that they did on Chucky looks fucking weird. Oh, it doesn't even look like Ray Liotta or something like that. Yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a plastic surgery done. It's just Ray Liotta playing Chucky. <laughs> oh my god, I think oh. he's dead. Okay, so so Friday the Thirteenth, uh, one part two, part three. That's when he gets his um. So part two, burlap sack. Mm -hmm. Part three is um oh, the first time with the mask. So part four is technically called the final chapter 
Then five is New Beginning. Six is Jason Lives. And then after that is, what the fuck? God, there's a lot. I wish the Jason Goes to Manhattan movie was like him. The New Blood. Huh. No, I wish the Jason Goes to Manhattan movie was uh, him going to New York to, you know, like, start a new career and... (laughs) You know, you know, like all those movies where the like the lady goes to New York and she's like, I want to be the next big lawyer in New York. <laughs> it's just Jason. <laughs> it's just like a montage of him trying to work like mail rooms and stuff to move his way up. And it's that working nine to five. It's just fucking like he gets mad, kills someone. <laughs> Jason, <laughs> come back, my son. Mom, I want to be a stockbroker. <laughs> I'm going to be a star. It's just the Wolf of Ross, Wall Street with the Jason in it's it. It's all the movie. Oh, it's all the monsters. <laughs> yeah. So it's like Pennywise. He's up there, too. That was the one movie, too, that was good when we were kids. Uh, Stephen King's It, the old one. Yeah. That one, it, it was just weird, but it was still good. Fucking uh, uh, Tim Curry killed that shit. Are you still looking for it? Oh no! I was, I was counting how many movies. There's twelve movies in total. Counting Jason X. Yes. Um. So after the new beginning, it goes into Jason Lives. Jason Live goes into the New Blood. New Blood leads into part eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, part eight is Jason goes to Manhattan, or Jason Jason hits Manhattan's, whatever, or goes. I can't fucking see. <laughs> oh, it takes Manhattan. Yeah. And then Jason goes to hell. Actually, I don't remember Jason goes to hell. I don't, I don't know. I don't think I ever actually watched that one. And then from there is Jason X, which came out in two thousand one. <laughs> then in two thousand three, they did the Freddy versus Jason movie. And then two thousand and nine is when they did the Friday the Thirteenth um, remake. Following the Freddy versus Jason uh, uh, blueprint, uh, what's the next movie you would make? Uh, what monsters would you pit against each other? Um, or which movie, like mer- monsters or killers, would you pit? Uh, honestly, I would think that uh, Mike Myers needs to fight somebody. He's never actually fought against anybody, and I've got he's he, he no he fought uh what's his face uh Coolio, <laughs> 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 not but Coolio Buster Rhymes uh, Buster Rhymes yeah it wasn't it Buster no it was Coolio was it we, okay. who was it Buster Rhymes or Coolio it was a H two O. H2O? Yeah. Which one is that one? It's Halloween H2O. Halloween? Like that. Okay. Yeah. It has, it's either Coolio or Busta Rhymes in it. And no, it's Busta Rhymes because he starts doing like all this Kung Fu shit on him too. Let's see. I'm looking. It's LL Cool J. What? No, there's one where he's like a. Well, that's the one who's on Halloween H2O. 20 years later, 98. Yeah, LL Cool J is the only rapper on this, like, uh, cast. Huh. That must have been a different one then, because I remember him fighting someone with dreads. And it was, a ra- like, Busta Rhymes or LL Cool J. Let's see. It had to be Busta Rhymes then. I want to look up LL Cool J and then images. Oh, no, he's got a bald head. He was a cop yeah, in the movie. He always has his bald head. He no, he had a he, he had a fucking look up a. Let's see, I'm looking. I'm looking, I'm looking up Coolio. No, there's nobody with dreads and this. Well, nothing's coming up at least. Halloween Resurrection. Oh, Resurrection. Yeah. Okay. Well, whatever. We're 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 um, we're going down that hole. No, you, you have to watch the fight, too, if you've never seen it. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. I know this is a really popular series, and you might hate me for not knowing much about it, because I just don't... I don't. It's like the one that I've like ignored, I guess. Because yeah. I feel... I feel like it's a, a specific type of person that enjoy. Yeah. What the hell is this? It's Busta Rhymes fucking fighting <laughs> Michael Myers. Yeah, and he just starts fucking his shit up, dude. See, he's doing like... <laughs> what the hell? Oh, 
I don't know what it was, but like the like the early two th- <laughs> like what is it like the early two thousands yeah. version of Mike Myers? They made the mask worse. You know, they made it like too rubbery looking. Yeah, he looked. The older ones look better because yeah. they had kind of like a plesh look to it. It, it had a cheap look to it. Yeah, that's because what it was saying. a cheap mask. Yeah, yeah. But then they had to like make it all fancy and shit. Um, after a while, what was it? He couldn't take the mask off anymore because it like melted to his head. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, the one I was going to bring up, I don't know anything about this series. I know it's a very popular series, but, you know, don't hate me because I've just never seen any of the movies. The Hellraiser series. Oh, yeah. That was really good. Yeah. I, yeah. It's because I don't, I don't, I just never got around to watching any of them. No, I, I know they're very popular yeah. and I know they have a great fan base. Yeah, but there's I mean, a huge fucking like lore behind it too now. Yeah. yeah it's pretty crazy. I wanted to kind of watch it a little bit because I know yeah. like, uh, in in uh in uh, my favorite manga uh, berserk mm-hmm. there's like a group in there called the godhead mm-hmm. and they're based on the characters that are in hellraiser the cenobites the cenobites yeah, yeah. cuz essentially you know they exist outside of whatever the fuck that is yeah, like it's like a pain dimension or some shit like that yeah well i know that's how in Zen- the things but in, in berserk it's similar like they're yeah. like the ones that are like the controllers of fate you oh, know wow. okay so in each one of them is like essentially a god that gets worshipped and they uh they basically uh broker deals with humans to turn them into demons basically they'll give them great amount of power for exchange for their humanity yeah and then exchanging their humanity turns them into a fucking like demon-esque thing okay. and the whole story is Guts basically trying to kill the guy he trusted as a friend who basically did a, who like killed like their whole old mercenary group and like raped his love interest. And yeah, uh, he's one of the Godheads now. He's trying to find a way to kill the Godheads. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's the whole point of Berserk. It's a great fucking series. Get into it if you want to. Yeah. Don't watch the animes unless you watch the original 90s series. That one's okay. But the the 2010, 11, 12, whatever year it is, uh, those ones are god awful. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you were a Cenobite, what would you look like? Huh? Because, you know, it's always like some weird shit. Like, like Pinhead has the, the fucking nails in the head and you know the slices on his chest Mm -hmm. then there's that one guy is just like bondaged up and his face is just teeth (laughs) yeah he's like (laughs) that's all he does you see him pop up he's like (laughs) (laughs) uh there's a big old fat one i forgot what his name is but he has like these cool little like CeeLo green sunglasses it looks like CeeLo green but like white in the and like in pain (laughs) what CeeLo green yeah Mm. But uh, what do you? What <laughs> would you be? Fuck you. <laughs> um, what would your style be? What my style be? Yeah, I would, I would, I would go against the grain, and instead of like be like like I, most of them all wear like tight black yeah. leather. It, it's, it has to be about pain. That's what it is. It has to be about pain. Yeah, because that's what it is. They do. They inflict pain, and that's how they like do their thing. Uh, I would just be like a really hairy dude, and I'm just always like ripping my like, hair out. Like, uh, 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 uh. I would be a sheet of. Uh, I would no. I wouldn't be a sheet of paper. I would be a, a, a Manila folder, <laughs> and just give you paper cuts. I t- <laughs> but in like the places like so like into the webbings of the fingers. <laughs> Like, or, like, right here, like, right on the edge of the fingertip. Yeah. Like, right where you're always going to touch something. That's what I would be. I would tie my victims down and pluck a nose hair one at a time. Oh, God, dude. Have you ever accidentally plucked one? Yeah, all the time. Because you have to, like, just cry or something. (laughs) Sometimes I just got to get it out, man. It bothers me because you feel it in there, Mm -hmm. like, tickling your nostril. like, sticking out. Like, I have one right now. I think it's sticking out. All right, so I'm going to go on to the next part. This part I put down just because I thought it was funny that they did this. Did you know they made a The Ring versus The Grudge movie? <laughs> what? Yeah, they did a uh, they did The Ring versus The Grudge because they're both, like, considered the same type of horror movie. Yeah. And I think they're both, Jap- they're both Japanese series, yeah, it's, aren't uh, they? Yeah, it's Juwan and uh, Juwan is uh, The Grudge. And Ring, I think, is just Ringu. Yeah, this was a 2016 movie. Huh. And um what kind of fighting styles are they? Are they rocking? Kramaga? Yeah, I think the the movie was called Sada 
Sadako versus Kayako. Oh yeah, because they're both like evil, yeah, evil Japanese girl spirits. Yeah, and was it, this just an excuse to see two Japanese girls fight? I guess so. Yeah. I, I don't know the whole point of the movie. Let's see. I'm I'm uh I'm bringing up the Wikipedia. Maybe you'll tell me what the fucking. I'm haunting this house. No, I am, bitch. I watched a movie. It's fucking stupid. Oh my god, the plot's pretty fucking long. <laughs> How long is it? It's a couple of paragraphs. Oh, wow. Let's see. One, two, three. Is, is it a four, Japanese movie? Five, six, seven, eight. It's eight paragraphs long. What the fuck? Just give the synopsis at the very top. Let's see. A social worker visits the residence of an elderly woman only to find her sh- uh, strangled by an electric cord. A nearby video player suddenly turns on and plays the cursed videotape. She watches Sadoko Yamamura appears and kills the social worker. The video player is sold at a shop and bought by University student Yuri Karahashi and Natsumi Yuno. Uh, when they find the cursed videotape inside, they play it. The footage has been upgraded, displaying a decrepit building inside of a, u- a usual well, and the cursed deadline has been reduced to two days yuri gets distracted by her phone call leaving natsumi to watch the tape in its entirety by herself afterwards they receive a disturbing phone call as sadako manifests in the room behind yuri startling natsumi so so they found the tape yeah they watched it they get cursed with the whole ring girl thing Mm -hmm. but they're also in the house where the grudge lives and I guess some point in the movie they meet each other and they're like, <laughs> "Who are you? Who are you?" <laughs> it's like the whole like Spider Man meme, like, <laughs> "Yeah, <laughs> we look the same," because <laughs> they do. They both wear the white dresses with the long black now hair. You're just being racist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, fuck anybody in the comments that keeps saying I was like mix that Mexican OT. I don't. We're just Mexican. That's yeah, the really. Only, what the fuck? That's just fucking. What the hell? <laughs> I'm telling you, it's the hair, dude. <laughs> the hair? Yeah, it's the hair. We don't even have the same hair, though. You have the same cut. I don't think we do. Yeah. Do we? I don't know. Like, I, I've listened to his music, and I've seen his clips and stuff before, yeah. but I'm like, I'm not, like, caught up with everything that he does, so I'm not entirely... I've like, just seen from his few clips and stuff. I, I just know that he, rider. like, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's a lot more blinged out than I am. Hit us up, Mexican OT. That'd be cool. Yeah, we'll get you on here. We'll talk about stupid shit. <laughs> You would never come on this. <laughs> you never know. Uh, It'll give us some street cred, I guess. <laughs> Maybe he knows my cousin. Because uh, he's from Houston, right? Uh, Where's no, he from? Bay City. Bay City? Yeah. Where's that? Somewhere in Texas. I don't fucking know. Yeah. Bay City. Okay. All right, whatever. Okay, so <laughs> moving on. Let's see. The, res- the recent It movies versus the It series. Uh... It series holds a special place in my heart. Uh, it's good. I fucking love it. It's dumb as shit, of course, but it's something I watched when I was a kid. It was great. Yeah. Uh, the new ones, I think they're fucking great. Um, yeah. I. What's his name? And what's his Skarsgård? Yes. Yeah. Um, Andrew Skarsgård? No, something like that. I don't know. Bill Skarsgård. But uh, Bill Skarsgård? I think so. Um, let's see. Uh, but he, the, the thing that he can do with his eye, like the, the eyes going two different ways. He can do that. Himself. Yeah. Yeah. Bill Skarsgård. Yeah. And he like, he did it during like the, the, what's it called? The, the audition for Pennywise. Oh yeah. I forgot about Bill Skarsgård where he's in that quick scene in the barbarian where he just gets fucking killed. Dude. Yeah. He could fucking wreck. He gets like grabbed by the head and they and just, just like smashed. It, yeah. Honestly, when he showed up, I was like, oh, fuck. He's in this movie. He's mm-hmm. the fucking barbarian, bro. That's why they put him on there, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's so fucking misleading. Mm-hmm. That movie's so good. Yeah. Um, anyways, moving on. But no, yeah, on it, um, I just thought it was good. And then, the yeah, they had a bunch of, like, big-name actors on the show or on the movie to to play the kids as adults. Mm-hmm. Whoever did the casting for it, I think, did a really good fucking job. Like, all the kids... You can see them growing up to looking like the people they played. Except for, uh, what's his face? The kid from, uh... no. No, they all pretty much look pretty much the same. Oh, they made, the f- they made like, the fat kid, like, really handsome. Yeah, of course they did. Yeah. Yeah. That's not how that works. <laughs> it can. 
uh, and then I'm made still the, waiting. And the, <laughs> the smart, the smart ass kid turned into Bill Hader. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and he's gay. <laughs> Who would have thought? Uh. All right. Well, uh, to end off with like all the, uh, with all like the my favorite horror stuff, and then how it would compare in those mm-hmm. worlds and shit. Uh, one thing I did want to say was like I've noticed a lot in uh in recent years that mostly through my nephews is what mm-hmm. I learned kids love horror yeah like they watch a lot of like different like, kind of horror stuff most of it is just complete nonsense mm-hmm. you know I think most of it is like the like the horror aspects of different like I know right now uh the Five Nights at Freddy's movie just came out which I heard was terrible but kids fucking yeah made it like the most popular. Or the best selling movie. I think it's like tripled what it cost to make. Like yeah, they something got that back. Something first ridiculous. Night. Yeah. But yeah, but for anybody else, it's just like it's it's not that scary. But really cool animatronic characters that were built by the Jim Henson company. Oh really? Yeah. Oh wow. So the Jim Henson people actually built the actual like um <laughs> There's fucking... a there's a cameo. You hear in the background like Freddy's killing someone here. Mm, I'm Kermit the Frog. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, Miss Piggy. <laughs> waka Waka. <laughs> For that fat, Freddy Fazbear should have dropped a Waka Waka. <laughs> yeah, that would have been hilarious. Uh, but yeah. Um, but with that, with that being said, yeah, I wanted to talk about my favorite child horror, child horror movies. Like movie about a child? No, no kid horror movies. Oh, okay. My favorite would probably be uh, Coraline. That was pretty. It's a great one. The other one would be uh, I technically it is horror, even though it's not really that spooky, but it's a good movie. Paranorman. Oh, I love that movie. Another dude. stop motion movie. All those movies from uh, who was it? Leica. That's the company that made that one. I think. Yeah. Yeah, they make some great ass fucking uh, uh, stop animation movies. Um, they did that Kubo movie. That one was good. Now this is the last one I wanted to bring up. This is which one? This is a fucking. This is the movie. There, I'm like, this is the only time Disney ever made a movie where I was like, okay, this is pretty fucking dope. Do you remember the Disney movie? Don't look under the bed. Oh, yeah, and it's like the whole, like, monster world that's under the bed. It's about your imaginary friends that you forget that turn into your nightmares. Yeah. And then they had that black um, character mm-hmm. who slowly starts turning into, like, a decrepit demon-looking yeah, character. Like, yeah, and then um, I, I looked it up just so you can remember some of the fucking photos, but... Like, dude, this movie was fucking terrifying yeah. for a Disney movie. That was good. Yeah. And, like, don't get me wrong. Like, Disney did occasionally do some horror stuff with, like, Goosebumps. And they did, um... Goosebumps was in, uh, Disney. Was it Disney? Was it not Disney? No. Oh, then what was... It was his own thing. It was, was it on, uh, it was on WB. Really? Yeah. That's Channel it. 3, WB. Okay, well, I know they have a Goosebumps series now on Disney. Oh, they do? Yeah. They must have bought it, then. Well, let me see. I want, I'm kind of... Who's... Where did Goosebumps first premiere? Wasn't it a book series first, and then it became a show? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Man, I always fucking love them Choose Your Own Adventure ones. God, those books were cool. Well, one thing I thought was really interesting, I watched like this little video that was talking about Goosebumps, mm-hmm. and apparently Goosebumps was uh, came after Fear Street. So uh, R.L. Stein created the Fear Street series, which were teenage horror novels, right? And then his huh. wife suggested that he should make horror books for children even younger than that. Okay. And that's where Goosebumps came from. Um, let's see. Series. Uh, let's see. All right, now it's just saying. Uh, what was. Yeah, Goosebumps was the uh, shit. I remember. Um, I watch it all the time. Just the intro was cool with the dog with the glowing eyes and the G that was going everywhere. Like okay, it was weird. originally airing on Fox Kids yeah. in the United States. Okay. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, wait. Di- yeah, didn't Disney acquire Fox? That's why. Yeah, probably. That, that's, yeah, that, it that, bought that, everything. Yeah, that, that that is true. <laughs> I love how we were just watching the, the other podcast that talked about Goosebumps on theirs. Oh. Now we're talking about goosebumps. What what podcast? That one that uh, followed us. Uh, shout out to Hand Me Down Pod. 
<laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. They're fuck. They're, yeah, they're, they're a good podcast. Go check them out. Another yeah. Latino podcast. We're gonna it. copy all your videos now. No, <laughs> <laughs> go follow them. Don't follow Isimo. Fuck those guys. Yeah, fuck those guys, man. <laughs> hey, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm uh, not. <laughs> all right. Well, last thing I wanted to do. See, you know, I'm dressed as um. Dracula. <laughs> I had to stop myself there. Count Chocula. No, no. <laughs> Were you going to say Blackula? No, I was, I was going to say, since I'm dressed as a F word, um, <laughs> I caught myself. I was yeah. about to I, I'm sorry. I'm, I can't help it. I, I'm, I'm from the South, guys. I fucking talk like a maniac. Over there dressed like Liberace. <laughs> Liberace on Halloween about to play a fucking piano. Are yeah. you a vampire? No, soy espanol. <laughs> I'm from Mexico. <laughs> This is just what everybody in Madrid wears. <laughs> I'm from Barcelona. <laughs> Barcelona. Barcelona. Fuck you, Spain. <laughs> Fuck Spain. Yeah. Anyway. Give us back our gold. So I'm going to be going, I'm going to do the top five vampire movies. Okay. Starting at five, working my way up to one. Okay. These are just my personal preferences. Mm -hmm. I don't really care for vampires that much, but these are the ones that I think are the best. Number five. Lost Boys. Yeah. Great vampires. Hells yeah. They're fun. Mm -hmm. It's a fun movie. It's a very fun movie. All the other ones suck. That one's good. Yeah. Leave it at that. Number four, Nosferatu. It's the original. It is actually a very creepy movie. Yeah. Even for it to be a black and white, like, like silent movie. It's a damn good. It's a scene where he's staring at the camera. Number three, best vampire comedy what we do in the shadows. Oh fuck yeah! Dude. That movie was fucking yeah. hysterical. Love that movie. It's actually if you great. like the show, watch the movie. Number two, best action movie, Blade. Best vampire movie. Yeah, yeah. I love the the fucking TikToks of people being like when you're in the club dancing and the blood sprinklers start and uh, some black dude just starts fucking killing everyone, <laughs> but you're just so in the zone. It's just someone just. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, I almost went with um, Abraham looking vampire hunter as the <laughs> my favorite like one because that one is very funny. It's but, funny. It's stupid. But Blade is better. Yeah, the and original Blade. If you haven't watched the Abraham Lincoln movie, watch it. It's worth it. Actually, it's dumb, but it's pretty cool. Blade is a great movie. Blade Two is okay. Blade mm -hmm. Trinity you sucked. Yeah. Um, last one, number one. This is what I think is the best interpretation of vampires. 30 Days of Night. Oh, yeah. That very, was really good. Best re mm -hmm. representation of any vampire. One, very good plot based on a very good graphic novel. And I thought it was well-executed movie. And, yeah, that's all I got. I just thought the vampires in that one were the best example of vampires in general. Mm -hmm. Twilight was really lame and just a waste of time. And the thing is, all that hype died off very quickly. I just like how the, the even character. Robert Pattinson himself was like, God, like yeah, he hated this fucking him. Fucking sucked. But uh, what is it? Um, people were making fun of the way the uh, the writer writes the characters. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it? Edward is like paragraphs long explaining how he looks, how he twinkles, the color of his hair is the perfect chestnut, whatever the fuck she says. It's a whole like couple paragraphs worth of ex of just what he looks like. And then when they talk about Bella, teenager, brown hair, white. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, okay. It was basically just like a fucking, like, wet dream novel. Yeah. But then again, I feel like. Jacob's a pedophile. Yeah. Yeah. He, like, he imprinted on a child, which yeah. is so fucking weird that they put that in the in the yeah. fucking movie. It's such a weird it's thing. It's weird that she put it in the book. Like, what the fuck? What? I, yeah, I don't fucking know. Yeah. Like, it's so fucking weird. But I wonder thing, how many of those uh, vamp and werewolf people out there are just like, oh, I'm imprinting on you. <laughs> it's like, no. What the fuck? I don't even want to think about it. It's yeah. fucking, it, it bothers me, dude. Yeah. It bothers me that people fucking like write this kind of shit. But then again, a lot of... <laughs> A lot of authors write shit that where I'm like, what were you thinking when you wrote this? Well, Stephen King and It. Yes, I was yeah. about to bring that up. I'm like, why? Like, why? Like, I, I remember when I was a kid in, in middle school, I wanted to get into horror novels 
because I thought, okay, I'm sure the books are just as good as the fucking like shows, right? Yeah. So I just picked a random, uh, like a random like fucking um, Stephen King book, and I think the one I picked was Salem Lot, which just happened to be a vampire book, and completely random, right? And I read the book, and then I was like, there's some moments in it that genuinely kind of like you know send chills up your spine, mm-hmm. like here and there, especially like when you're young, kind of like, ooh, this is spooky. Yeah. But I'm like, why are they having sex in a playground? Yeah, like, this is needed to be in here. Why is this in here, Stephen King? You are very graphic about this. He, also, he was very sexual in a lot of his books. Yeah, for no real reason. Yeah, and I never understood why. And he always said weird shit. Yeah. Yeah. He was just a weird looking dude too. It was like, like a skinny turtle. <laughs> uh Steven, in your latest book, you had a whole chapter just talking about toe sucking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> apparently he was on a lot of coke back in like the when he was filming a bunch of his movies back yeah. in the, or when they were doing them and everything. Mm-hmm. He was just coked out of his fucking brine. Well, I remember there was Brian. That- <laughs> <laughs> Brian. Brian. I know he like there was that famous interview that he did where it was him and George R. R. Martin like on stage and George um, R. R. had asked him, how the fuck do you write so many books? Because he's like 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 he's yeah known for taking way too long to release a book while Steven whips out like a new book like every couple of months. Right. Yeah. And apparently what Steven had said is that he dedicates to writing a certain amount of pages every single day, no matter what he, his day does not end until he finishes writing those many pages. Wow. And he's been doing this since like forever. So because he's gotten to that point, he can just whip out books like nothing. And he essentially hires an editor to go through his material and be like, yeah, take all this bullshit out. Like you wrote mm-hmm. to over explain this, uh, drag this part out, like stop with the toe sucking. Like, what do you keep <laughs> putting more chapters? Like quit making kids. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> never. <laughs> you can't tell me what to do, Nancy. <laughs> and she's like, what if you put a, a, a monkeys paying for sex in the book? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, like, what is it, George R. R. Martin? He still has that one book, the last book uh, for Game of Thrones he has not put out yet. Yeah, which I don't know if that's ever going to be released. No, because he knows as soon as he does that, does that, no one cares about him anymore. Well, I don't think it's that. I think it's because he basically told them an interpretation of his ending for the series, and people were so dissatisfied with that ending that now he's like, fuck if I release the same ending, people are going to fucking hate it. So I think he's like forever stuck in this like self. Tr- they, yeah, yeah. He's stuck in this self uh, turmoil of like, Oh fuck. What do I do? Like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. He really fucked the pooch on that one. Yeah, he did. He should. <sighs> I don't think they should write or they should make shows or movies about things that aren't done yet. Like, like Game of Thrones, it wasn't fucking done. Like they were still they released a book while the show was going, and then this book was supposed to be the last part. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't think you should do that. That's just me. <laughs> yeah, I kinda agree with that, but it's also very um it's tough sometimes because there are some stuff where I'm like it's going to take them forever to finish it anyways. Yeah. A good example is like a lot of anime series. A lot of anime, anime series are super fucking mm-hmm. long because they've been, they never stopped writing them. Like a, an example would be like the, the most popular anime and the longest running anime is one piece. Yeah. You know, they have, I, I think they're like in the 300 of like how many volumes they are. Yeah. And there's like over a thousand plus episodes because eventually the anime did catch up, but even before it caught up, it was in that era of like, oh, we put out an episode anyways, throw some filler in there. Mm -hmm. So tons of filler. I started watching it, um, but through like fan edits that take out all the filler and shit. So it, it saves a lot of your fucking time, but that's besides the point. But yeah, like this, this, uh, I believe one piece started, started in like 96, 97. We looked it up. It was pretty like mid nineties. Yeah. yeah. It's still ongoing. Yeah. It's still not done. Like, uh, 
well, but then there's other examples like Kintaro Miura, who wrote Berserk. He didn't get to finish his series before he passed away because mm-hmm. he died unexpectedly. Uh, and uh, now his best friend is going to carry on because uh, his f- best friend who he came up as a uh, as a ma- manga like writer and artist actually knows the full story mm-hmm. because like they were that's how close they were as friends. And then you have other series that did end. And that were good and got really great adaptations like Yu Hakusho mm-hmm. and uh, the original Dragon Ball Z series and a couple of other ones. Yeah. Um, I don't, actually, I don't. Did Cowboy Bebop have a manga? I don't think it did. I think no, that, it was a straight show. Yeah, it was a straight show. Yeah. yeah, they probably made one after, but yeah, yeah. Samurai Champloo was good too. Hell's yeah, that was. It was a great show. Hell's yeah. Um, back to movies. <laughs> we're yeah, going off the topic. Yeah, we're right going now. off topic, but um. um I want to say... Uh, Ooh, what about manga horror? Uh, Junji Ito, anybody? Oh, yeah, that shit's fucking cool. Have you seen that new fucking thing that they're doing? The show on Netflix? Uh, Like, the one that's going to be... No, the one that's going to be in black and white? Oh, no, I haven't seen that. There is a... But on Netflix, they do have a Junji Ito, uh, like, little, like, yeah, that, series. Thing. Yeah, that one sucks. What? I liked I, it. I, I didn't like it at all. Yeah, well, it, because it didn't capture what Junji Ito is. Yeah, because it's in color. For one. Yeah, but, but uh, the, uh, this new one, dude, I got to show you this. No, uh, I've seen the pictures of it. It's like a, it looks like a rip from the from the comp or from the from the manga itself and everything. Yeah. It's pretty much just an animated manga. Yeah, Mango. but yeah, but the fact that it's actually like black and white and mm-hmm. looks fucking it looks really fucking cool. And it's I think the first one they show is the whole spiral storyline. Oh, really? One. Yeah, it's it's um uh was it you uh Yuzamaki? Yuzamaki? Mm-hmm. Uh, th- it's based on that graphic novel. And that one like I don't know what it is about Junji Ito, but he's super funny. He's super funny because he's known for these horrifying like depictions of horror that mm-hmm. he's written and they, he and they're all based on mundane things. Yeah. And he talks about like the reason why he's so good at this is cuz he's like everything scares me. Like he's like, I'm scared of everything. And they're like, what the <laughs> fuck do you mean? Because they asked him, he's like, are you scared of water? Yes. Are you scared of heights? Yes. Are you scared of clowns? Yes. Are you scared of long, dark hallways? Yes. He just like stops them. I'm scared. That's it. <laughs> Which is funny because when they interview Junji Ito, he's super nice yeah. and lovable and likable, right? But then, then you have a comparison of like the main dude from Studio Ghibli. Where he's like the biggest fucking asshole, mm-hmm. but he releases like these beautiful depictions of art because he he wants perfection. He wants perfection because his movies are great. He had a yeah. couple of movies that were directed by his son, where he was like, "You don't, you shouldn't animate. You're never gonna be as good as me." Like he told his son straight up, "You should just give up." And I and then there, there's there's like footage of him, like in a board meeting, being like. I think we need to get rid of him. He's just not good. He's not talented. He's never going to be able to like do what I've done. Like he's straight up about it. And there's like there's uh there's another he's one just in the corner. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Thank you for the opportunity. I guess. No, but you like, but it's 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 one of those weird things where like in like I guess in Japanese culture they're super harsh to each other and Wait, like they're these... they're very just just straight forward. Yeah. Yeah. No beating around the bush. It's like, oh, you suck. Yeah. Did you just kill yourself? <laughs> no, like, seriously, they're like, oh, you're useless. Like, what are you doing here in this world? It's yeah. Like, you're right. I should just fucking end it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, just look at their lives. It's just, um, it's all about, like, perfection. Like, it's 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 ingrained in them from, like, old times, you know, from the samurai times and everything. Yeah. Uh, you need, if you... If you do something, if you realize you have a hobby or a skill, you do it until you are the best at that one thing. Yeah. So it's like, oh, I'm really good at juggling. You better be the best fucking juggler in the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or your parents will just dis- be disappointed. Yeah. I mean, they're already disappointed that you're a juggler, but <laughs> I mean, just be the best. I well, guess. they're not as disappointed as the parents who have uh, gigolos. Juggalos? Juggalos. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I, guess, I guess gigolos too. Yeah, I don't know. 
I feel like maybe there is. Do you think there's more pressure on like prostitutes than there are for juggalos? I don't think the prostitutes. Um, it really depends. Or juggalos, I should I, say. There's a there's a um, I think there's a bias between like male and female prostitutes because like juggalos are like the guy prostitutes that go yeah. and sleep with women. I mean, I feel like the mom probably doesn't like like it, but the dad's like my fucking boy, just getting out of there and get work done. I would assume that male prostitution is probably less prominent and only because not in Washington DC. Huh? <laughs> all them all them little twinks running around with the with all them politicians. Well, that's the thing. I've always known that like f- from my understanding is just that like uh male prostitution would only really be for like elderly women trying to get like a young bull to fuck them right there's a movie about that yeah uh it has like it was it's um it's a it's a pretty famous like uh older female actress i think mm-hmm. it's meryl streep no it's not meryl streep i don't know who it is but she got them titties though <laughs> yeah um <laughs> but no it's uh and she's still really she's still a really like pretty lady too and uh this guy he she hires them but then he starts realizing, like, oh, this lady just doesn't, you know, uh, she just needs someone in her life, I guess. Yeah. And he starts befriending her, doing stuff, and, like, stuff. And she, I think they do, like, have sex every now and then. Yeah. But then I guess she starts, like, falling for him, and he starts falling for her. Um, which is kind of weird to me. Like, does he just show up one day and like, hey, you don't got to pay this time. What the fuck is that name of that movie? Which one? Where you just remind, you just jogged my memory about a movie. Deuce Bigelow and Mel Gigolo? No, no. <laughs> um, gotta look it up. Deuce Bigelow, European Gigolo? No. <laughs> He's got a mangina. Oh. Yeah. Uh, the movie Bernie. Bernie? With a. Uh, uh, with um with Jack Black. Yeah, he has he's like a doesn't he kill like someone in that movie? Yes, he like okay, so uh in small town Carthage, Texas in 96, local assistant mortician Bernie tried a beloved member of the community becomes the one becomes the only friend of a wealthy recently widowed Marge Nugent. The mm. townsfolk consider her cold and unpleasant. In the late 30s, and she's an elderly woman. They become inseparable, and then he, I guess, snaps one day because of the way she's treating him, and she fucking kills him, and then stows her, I guess, in, like, a fucking freezer or something. Oh, wow. And then uses her wealth to basically give back to the community. And uh, it's, it's such a good movie, hmm. but it's so fucking, like, it's so, like, interesting. It's, 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 it's I, th- I believe it's based on a true story. Oh, wow. Yeah, the film is based on an article of in Texas Monthly Magazine, who co-wrote screenplay. Okay, no, so I guess it was a written cope. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's not. It's rated eighty eight percent on on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> not that that matters anymore. Um, I got one for you. It's not really a. I guess you it would fall under kind of horror. Uh, purge. Purge. Yeah. Do you think you can make it? <sighs> Like, as you are right now. As I am right now? Yeah. Probably not. Like, say, I mean, like, not right now. Like, it just happens. But, like, you've had time to, like, you know, get situated. It's a whole year. Yeah. I would be kind of fucked in, I guess, in, like, this, like, living situation. Because these are, like, these are not, like, the most fortified walls. Yeah. It's, like, if I had, like, a fucking, like, you know. But you're also a little hidden. I am. Yeah. But still, a lot of windows. Oh, you're a walking target. Mm-hmm. Bullets will go right through every, anything. Uh, I probably shouldn't say, be saying this publicly. <laughs> <laughs> you can just... Sh- the 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 first uh, bedroom is right there. <laughs> <laughs> One of those guys that keeps saying that we're copying Rogan's listen to this like, I'm going to fight these motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Do it. No, no. Don't do that. Stop. <laughs> do it. I, I don't own weapons. Find me. <laughs> We our information is all online, anyways. All like, I ha- all I have is a ukulele. <laughs> you got a bass, huh? Oh, that is true. That is nailing a, with that thing. That's a pretty heavy bass. Yeah, it is. Really, just make them laugh. Yeah. Did I ever tell you about that time where my band and 
uh, we did like a live show, and I got hit in the face with by the by the bass. Are you serious? Yeah, because my uh, our bass player used to do like one of those like oh, the over spin. the shoulder spin, right? And he did that shit as I was walking past him, and then he just nailed me right on the bottom Ooh. of the lip. And he, but the thing was, his bass didn't have a rounded tip; it had a a sharp tip. It was Ooh. like an, it was an Ibanez. Yeah. So it, you know, it kind of has that sharp. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what's it called? Little point. Yeah, it's got a sharp point at the very tip of it, at the um, at like the tuning mm-hmm. part, and it just nailed me right here. And I remember tasting like blood, and I was like, "What the fuck?" And it, 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 it caught me by surprise. But we're in the middle of a fucking performance, so I had to ignore it. And then this is the weird part. I was like touching where he cut me, and I was like pressing my tongue on it. There was a hole. I could pierce your pierce your. He, he pierced my right lip. Right like right, he gave me like a little fucking like um, I don't know what the fuck that's called. Yeah, it's a weird piercing. It's a weird piercing. Yeah. It's like it's one that like douchebags get, or uh, white trash like uh, yeah, yeah, white trash ladies. That's why I took out my eyebrow ring, dude. I, it was a mistake. I should have never. Oh, done you that. had your eye. Oh yeah, that's right. I, for a little while, yeah. Did you have snake bites? No, no, never got. I never. That's the only piercing I ever got. Okay. Because I was like, yeah, piercings are lame. Like almost immediately after high school, because I was like, why did I even get my eye- eyebrow pierced? Yeah, piercings. I was, pl- I was, I was, I know. And I mean, that's all, that's you, but me yeah. personally, I'm like, I think they're lame. I just don't think they're that yeah, cool yeah. looking. It's like, okay, like first, like some people pull it off well, mm-hmm. like like lip piercings, no pier. I think no piercings are fine. You know, whatever. Uh, me personally, I just think I look like a fucking moron with them in my face. I just like I don't like it. Yeah. I never gauged my ears either for that reason. One, because all it took was me to smell somebody's like fucking ears, just like like walking past them. Oh, but that's gross. That's yeah, them not I, taking care of it. I know, yeah. but that smell is so disgusting yeah, to me. It's just the fucking armpit, pretty dude. Much. Let me tell you something. I fucking hate that I stopped vaping and smoking. Because my sense of smell has gotten... Oh, yeah. How's that going? Good. Yeah. I, I haven't smoked in, like, almost three months. There you go. Yeah. But, but no, what's annoying is my sense of smell got stronger, and yeah. now I smell everything. <laughs> if you would, like, release the tiniest fart, I could smell it. Like, it's... It Did fucking... you smell the one I released a while ago? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got another one brewing, so... Oh, uh, God. I made some, a lot of buffalo chicken dip tonight. I ate chili today. Oh, God. Yeah. Did you get it at Halloween? No. Oh, yeah. I'm handing out chili next year. I made a, uh, I made it. It's turkey chili. A turkey chili. Yeah. Yeah. It's delicious, actually. You might as well just eat a fucking salad. <laughs> what? <laughs> if it ain't beef, it ain't real. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh. Another one. Uh. Do you think you can help Father Mary, uh, Marin, uh, uh, save the girl from the Exorcist? No. No. Okay. Yeah. No. Me neither. I'd be like, bro, that's so metal. <laughs> she probably fucks. Huh? <laughs> Pazuzu fucks. Dude, imagine. <laughs> you imagine getting fucked by a demon? I think snaps. <laughs> Just... <laughs> that's a real danger. You yeah. have to like, stay away, like, far enough to where she doesn't rip your nose off. Yeah. But it wouldn't be too be too bad. You just got to hold her down a little bit, make sure she don't bite your hand. Maybe choke her a little bit. And just, ah, and just from there, Pazuzu, I'm gonna beat that pussy up. <laughs> I'm gonna beat that Pazuzu up. <laughs> Pazuzu. <laughs> I'm gonna beat that Pazuzu up. <laughs> oh god. Um. Uh, 28 days later. I I don't remember that movie. I haven't seen, um, I haven't seen it in a long time. It, uh, that's the um. It's a virus. It's a virus. Like a, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like a. They call it just rage because it just makes people go fucking crazy. They don't eat people. They, you just beat the fuck out of each other. And they, like, if you get, like, the little bit of blood or anything on you, you turn into one. You think you he, got, he, he got the monkey pox. <laughs> he fucked a chip. <laughs> it was that scientist from the last episode. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Um, do you think you can make it? Mm, it's a lot of running. No. Yeah. No, I feel well, like I mean, we'd be fine because we're in America. It only <sighs> happened in the UK. You're saying our immune systems are stronger? No, I would say because... that they're worse. I don't know, actually. I wonder how it is. Well, don't we... we have like the highest rates of obesity and also hells? This... Yeah, brother. Well, it's not. It's not just obesity, but it's also like I think we have like the highest rate of like 
Ugh. Oh, God damn it. Then Actually, we have, we have like the highest rate of like, like what, like just illness in general or some yeah, shit? Because of all the shit we put in our bodies. Yeah. We're, um, they have a, they actually uh, outlive us, I think. Who Not by much, uh, people from the UK, but they outlive us. No. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know how they outlive us because all they eat is like fucking like beans on toast and. That's why maybe they just their 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 diets are so like just carbs on carbs. No, but I mean maybe their food is just so fucking bland that they're just like they don't enjoy food, so they just naturally do exercise God, more. Speaking of fucking bland, Hannah sent me a uh, uh, a fucking TikTok. You know that bitch barefoot Contessa? No, I don't. God, look her up. She's a she's a she has like a show on like the Food Network. She does like cooking and shit, mm-hmm. but she's like super pretentious about it because she'll be like uh sourdough bread store-bought is fine and then she just keeps going she just makes you feel like shit for buying shit from the store not making it yourself but also (laughs) she was picking up the one she sent me she's in her little like pantry picking out like uh stuff for like ingredients for her uh Mm. whatever the fuck she's making and she's grabbing like here's some salt and then we have to grab some pasta and then for the spice ketchup (laughs) <laughs> yeah, this bitch grabbed ketchup for spice. <laughs> what? Not even like a sriracha. He just, no. just went straight ketchup. It's fucking tomatoes mashed with 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 sugar. Oh my that, god, that's what ketchup is. It's sugar, tomatoes, and like a few other little spices. This is bringing me flashbacks to the Rachel Ray Pasola episode. Oh god, dude, I show my mom that too. <laughs> dude, yeah. what's worse is she did it again with Guy Fieri. Are you serious? Yeah, and what he, did he, say? he did the same thing. He made it like he made it like a fucking bowl of chili. They made like the, the it Guy did, Fieri, really? Yes, with her, like because he was like he basically did the same fucking thing. Like he made he he made his own version of pozole, and it just fucking looked like it looked like they made a bowl of chili with a bunch of bullshit. On the, I they, can't believe that because he's been like all over like America just eating the best foods. Yeah, but at the same time, they're on the fucking Food Network, and they're yeah. like appealing to like the lowest denominator of like food people now did he say that was gangster though huh did he say it was gangster no then he's fucking lying now he didn't say once it was pussy popping or anything he was just like this <laughs> Can you imagine he dropped that shit? man that chili right there that shit's pussy popping right there man <laughs> and then he blasts chili out of his crotch <laughs> yeah you get a bowl um, you get a bowl <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to uh, Guy Fieri. Uh, man has a heart of gold um, uh, and cholesterol. Uh, he, um, what is it? He uh, he donates a fuck ton of money uh, to charities for like kids and stuff. Yeah, and he does a lot of good shit. Uh, but people just like just because he looks weird, people are like, "No, nah, fuck that guy." Yeah, but yeah, I like the hats that you could buy of his hair. Yeah, we should buy some. We should do a a, a review of diners, drive-ins, and dives. And just pick out his like best lines, because there are a few where he's just like, "Oh, I don't like this." Mm-hmm. Like he just tells us, "Like, oh, I'm I'm not a fan of this at all," and they leave it in the fucking episode. <laughs> what are some of his catchphrases, anyways? Uh, what is it? It's uh, that's a uh, that's gangster. Um, uh, put it on a flip flop, flip flop and sell it. What the fuck? Yeah, that's one. He's like, it just sounds I put like that on a flip flop and sell it. <laughs> It just sounds like he's making shit up. No, he is. Yeah, that's butt fucking good. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> that guy. He's a figure looking pussy good. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck are you saying to me? This chili, I want to put my dick in it. <laughs> Matter of fact, <laughs> we're talking a lot about chili today. I want a chili dog. I haven't had a chili dog forever. <laughs> When's the last time you had a chili dog? <laughs> For some reason, my mind was just like, I love to suck cheese off those titties. <laughs> <laughs> some guy. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's some hot cheese, though, man. You're going to give poor girl some third degree burns. <laughs> got to end this fucking episode. We're dragging it out. <laughs> fucking Guy Fieri. How did that even come up? Uh, I don't we'll, know. We'll have to do a full coverage episode yeah. of him, but I don't know any about his anything about his stuff. Anyways. <laughs> Oh my god Thank you again for listening to another episode of The Knife Funk Thank you to all the recent followers on Instagram and TikTok Yeah 
you guys are awesome thank you for all the engagement and all the comments uh, fuck all the guys who keep saying i look like mexican ot you're being racist but anyways as always you can catch us at the night funk podcast if you don't already follow us um, on Instagram and on TikTok, and then also we are on YouTube, but YouTube videos have been put uh, on halt for now. We're we're holding that off for a while. I've been dealing with a lot of technical difficulties, so I yeah. decided to just uh, take a break on it. We will get back to a uploading schedule eventually, and once we do, I will make sure to make a post about it. I'm sorry, it's just I'm limited to with what I have currently, but soon I will be able to. Um, get things up and rolling yeah. and we'll have more episodes available soon so anybody that wants to watch the full like um youtube videos uh just be patient they will be there we'll get caught up for now what we got is what we got and you know but anyways thank yeah. you again for anybody who's a new listener thank you for subscribing if you if you um if you aren't subscribed go ahead and hit uh that follow button on yeah, spotify hit the link tree you'll see everything there uh, the link tree is on Instagram, but also follow us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts so you can stay uh, stay caught up with all new episodes every Friday. Mm -hmm. But as always, guys, thanks again for listening. We'll see y'all next week. Y'all take it easy and fucking yeah. We did not copy Rogan. Fuck you. <laughs> no, we totally did. We're gonna copy everyone. Okay, we're coming after you, Isimo. Were you gonna Were you gonna bring something up? Uh, yeah. Uh, what a hot frisbee of fun. <laughs> Uh, dude, I've been stricken by chicken. <laughs> what the f uh, holy moly, Stromboli. <laughs> that tastes like my uncle's balls. <laughs> We're taking you on a road rocking trip down to Flavortown. Where the <laughs> gravitational force of bacon warps the laws of space and time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. All right. Later, guys. <laughs> Peace, love, and taco grease. <laughs> <laughs>